Hello marketers, this is Anusha from Major Marketer. In this video, we are going to try the conversion time of a user. That is the time that the user takes to convert. So generally, most of us uh, refer to this time lag report in our analytics. That is the data that could be gathered or automatically gathered by analytics. We can refer to it in multi-channel funnels, the time lag report where we can find the time that the user takes to convert on an e-commerce website. So this data could be automatically gathered by Google Analytics only for an e-commerce website where the conversion would directly take place on the website uh, regarding the checkout and that could be intimated to analytics and based upon that data, analytics could create such kind of report like uh, the data uh, for users who have converted in four days and the conversion value. So three con users have converted in four days and also we can mention the value. Uh, this value would be displayed over here only when we send the conversion value to the analytics along with the product purchase while at the checkout time. And also uh, we can get all the data regarding the several days that the user takes to convert and the number of users who convert in that particular time range. So what about uh, other websites like uh, some inquiry websites or uh, general websites where there would be some inquiry forms or application forms like some bank websites where the filling of a form would be the most important action or the macro conversion that they would like to track and the time taken by the users to do that macro conversion. So for that, in order to track such kind of macro conversions in a general website where application form or an inquiry form is the major action that could be performed by the users and considered as conversion, then we need to apply this conversion time tracking technique for that. Uh, GTM, we use GTM for all the kind of measurement strategies because GTM is the heart of measurement. You can track any kind of macro or micro actions performed by users through GTM. So now for the conversion time tracking also, I'm going to uh, use Google Tag Manager. For that initially, we need to create a variable. So firstly, we need to drop a cookie on all the users when they first visit our website. So I have created a cookie variable, first party cookie variable as a default type in GTM. I hope you're more uh, clear with this kind of different kinds of variable types. If you have seen all of my previous videos, I have explained them well. So here I have considered uh, the first party cookie variable and the cookie name I have given it as first week, first visit. So let me save this. Just remember this cookie value. This cookie value could be further used in our tags created. And then we need to create a tag to assign a cookie value to all the users when they first land on our website or when they first visit our website. So for that, we need to use a uh, cookie function to uh, drop a cookie on the users on their first visit. So let me uh, use a default function called set cookie. This is the function to create a cookie or drop a cookie on any user. So we need to mention the name and the value and the expiry date of the cookie. So cookie would not uh, last for long. So it, it depends upon the expiry date that you give. So here I have mentioned it as 365 and the cookie name, as I mentioned before, as I've created a first party cookie variable named first visit. So I mentioned the cookie name as first visit and the value of the cookie could be the timestamp at which the user has visited to your website for the first time. So the timestamp could be calculated by using this date function in the date. We need to get the time, right? So the exact time they visited our website. So for that, we need to use the get time function. So when I call the set cookie function, the cookie with the value uh, of the timestamp will be assigned to the uh, first visit cookie variable. And the cookie would last for one year. And this tag could trigger when the cookie value is undefined. That is. Uh, the cookie isn't on the web user, so it's the first time that the user is visiting to your site. Only then this tag could fire and the cookie value of the timestamp would be dropped on that particular user. So if I could just preview this, I have implemented this on one of my site. You can see the value being dropped upon the user when he first visits to the site. So this is a website I have implemented uh, this conversion time tracking on. So this is the edit, edit this cookie extension where you can see all the cookies dropped by 
is on the website on the on that particular users so this is the first visit cookie that we have created right now and this is the timestamp that have visited this website for the first time so i have already deleted the cookies and this is the first time i'm visiting my website so this is the timestamp that could be stored in this cookie and now so i have a form in my website so contact us form so here the macro conversion for me is filling this contact us form and i would like to know the number of days a user takes uh, to fill this form after he comes first time to our website so i came to the website for the first time and i'm just filling this form with some random values so when i submit this form i want the time to be calculated from the first visit of my visit over to this website to the form submission time so i'm submitting this form maybe it might have, have taken nearly uh, some might be 4 to 5 seconds for me to fill this form after my first visit so let us see if this tag has fired or not so here form submit this is the form submission tag that i am sending to analytics so along with this i want to send the time that the user has taken from his first visit to fill this form and to be converted on my website so for that we need to implement another custom javascript variable a macro to capture the time lag of the user in order to convert so i have take, created a custom javascript variable Name time to conversion. This is the time taken by the user to convert. So, all the custom JavaScript variables would be written in the form of functions itself. So, they return a value, and this value could be stored in that particular custom JavaScript variable. Uh, you would be clear with this kind of stuff uh, and implementations, and this kind of stuff would be uh, taught a lot in a bootcamp. A bootcampers are very well trained with this kind of implementations and measurement strategies to implement any tracking techniques. So. Now, uh, coming to the function, we write try catch block all the time just to get rid of the errors. So whenever there's an error in the execution, then this catch block would be executed and there couldn't be any misleads. So when coming to the try block, so if there is a cookie on the user, this is the first party cookie that we have dropped on the user. So if the cookie is present on the user, then we need to uh, capture the time when he again comes to the website. So as I have already mentioned, the date function, we need to get the time uh, for his another visit. So we would like to calculate the time he, he took to convert, right? So for that, we need to capture the actual timestamp that he visited right now and the previous or the past timestamp that he visited our website for the first time that is captured in the first party cookie variable, first visit. So then, Actually, the timestamp would always be in milliseconds. So in order to understand of uh, our convenience, we convert it into minutes. So for that, we need to divide it by 1000 and by then 60. So if the cookie isn't present, then it will just return undefined. Or if there is any error, then it will return undefined. So this value will be captured in this variable. And the, uh, this value uh, will then be used in the Google Analytics tag we are going to create and send events only when the uh, form is being submitted by the user and he is about to convert. So I have create, uh, we should create a GA form submit tag. And here the track type is for us is event. We have several track types. We can send the same data as a timing hit also. And the entire user timings and an average time taken by user to convert will be displayed in the analytics timing, user timing stack where you can then analyze the time taken by user. But here we are sending it as an event. And the event category would be form submission. And the action is contact form because the form in my website is in contact us. And then here, along with this event, we would like to send the time taken by the user to convert. So the, cap uh, the capture value is in this variable, CJS time to conversion. And always the interaction hit should be true in order uh, to in order that the bounce rate could not be affected with our hits or the events that we send. And the trigger for this tag would be the form submission, right? So whenever the form submit 
is being submitted by the user, then we need to trigger this. As the form is in the contact is form, so this could be the trigger condition. So let me now again preview this. Before that, uh, let me just, uh, okay, I have already missed it, let it be. I'm just refreshing the preview. Let us see if the value is being updated and then sent to analytics. So I just, uh, this is a second visit to the website after a few minutes maybe. So let me again fill the form. It's some random values. I'm now submitting the form. So when I submit the form, the tag to be fired is, so whenever there's a form submission, see the GA tag is being fired. Here, the relevant e event attributes could be updated. So category form submit and the action contact form. See, it's been five minutes from my first visit to the conversion. So this is the time that I have taken to convert on, a, on this website as the application form or the contact form is in conversion for our website. So this data could be sent to Google Analytics. So let us just refer to the data in the real time. So real time events. Let me see the events that we got. So form submit. So let us see the time taken. Mm -hmm. See here. So initially before when I submitted a form, it was one minute. And now it took me five minutes to convert for another user maybe. In a general case, uh, and another user would take five minutes to take convert. So generally, uh, when we go to the events report in behavior tab, it takes little time uh, for the data to update it into the actual reports. Yeah, here. Yeah. Let me go into events. And here we can see the, all the events. See here. Along, these are the previous events that we are being tracking on a website. So along with this, we'll also get the form submission event and the time taken by the users to submit and the number of users who have submitted the form. So based on this value, uh, we can identify the average time that the users are taking uh, to convert from the first time they visited to our website. So based upon that, we can again, uh, based on the event label, right? Here we are sending the conversion time as the event label. So again, then we can use this event label in order to create the audience in analytics. So let me create an audience here. So here in this audiences, while creating the audiences, we can use the conversion time taken and we can target only those people who have taken less time or more time to convert. And based upon that, we can uh, target different kinds of ads and different kinds of uh, targeting and bidding in our campaigns and target the audience based upon the time they take to convert. So this is the way we uh, implement the advanced measurement strategies and the measurement techniques for any kind of website uh, apart from e-commerce websites. We also uh, teach our students with e-commerce tracking and has e-commerce tracking techniques in our bootcamp. And as an agency, we also deal with very complicated issues and challenges and find the best solutions for that. I hope you're clear with this conversion time tracking. This would be very much useful for those websites which are uh, mostly dependent upon some macro actions that could not be automatically tracked by the analytics. And then you can track with this kind of uh, measurement strategies and get the reports into analytics and analyze them and then retarget them based upon some conditions. So this is the way we implement the measurement techniques in a wonderful and an amazing way. I hope you're clear with the conversion time tracking. Thank you so much.